Hello second graders and welcome to our math lesson for today. Today we're doing lesson 10.4 which is called read bar graphs and the essential question that we're going to be asking ourselves and answering today is how is a bar graph used to show data? So last week we learned about um, something called a tally chart which was used to show data and we also learned about picture graphs um, which were also used to show data. So now we're going to be introduced to something called a bar graph and how it's just another way to kind of show people the data that we collect from a survey or um, something else that is um, is allowing us to uh, collect data on something. So, um, so we're going to learn a little bit more about what a bar graph is and how we use it to show data. Well, hi! How are you? It's a beautiful day in the woodland. A really fun party just ended a few minutes ago. Oh, look! The kids left something behind. Click the picnic table to see what's going on. There were a whole bunch of balloons at the party. Some of them are tied to the picnic table now. They had balloons in four different colors. Let's see, I see yellow balloons, and blue balloons, and pink balloons too, and purple balloons. <laughs> I wonder which color balloons there are the most of. Is there a way we could show this data so it's easy to talk about and compare? <laughs> Come on, let's go find out. So the key word that he said there is compare. Uh, bar graphs are used a lot um, when it comes to comparing um, certain, certain things. So, for example, they're comparing the color of balloons in... Uh, in this video right here and um, a bar graph would be really good to see which one has the most balloons which one has the least number of balloons and which one you know kind of has the middle um, amount of balloons or um, which color of balloons um, are equal right so like you can a bar graph is really going to show you which one has the most which one has the least and which ones um, are kind of the same with each other Morgan made a picture graph to show the number of red trucks she and her friends saw last week. How many red trucks did the four children see? Let's use Morgan's picture graph to solve the problem. The title of the picture graph is Red Trucks Seen Last Week. Each red square in the graph stands for one red truck. To find out how many trucks a child saw, count the red squares in the row next to the child's name. Let's start with Morgan. How many red trucks did Morgan see? One, two, two red trucks. How many red trucks did John see? John saw one, two, three, four, five red trucks. How many red trucks did Cindy see? Cindy saw seven red trucks. How many red trucks did Carlos see? Four red trucks. You can add the numbers of trucks Morgan and her friends saw to find how many red trucks they saw last week. Two plus five plus seven plus four is equal to 18. The children saw 18 red trucks last week. So you could do it that way. You can you can see how many each person has and then add them up. Or you can just count them all. Um, adding them up, if you can do uh, really good uh, mental math and, and add these numbers up pretty quickly, then that might be the best option because um, it will be the quickest option. But you can also just count all of the red squares on the picture graph too, whichever one uh, works best for you. A bar graph uses rectangle-shaped bars to show data. The title tells what the bar graph is about. This bar graph is about children playing games. The label game says that the graph has data about different games. These are the games. 
The numbers at the bottom of the graph stand for the number of children playing games. To read a bar graph, follow the line from the end of each bar down to the numbers at the bottom. This will tell you how many children are playing each game. Let's try it. Find the bar for basketball. Follow the line from the end of the bar down to the numbers. Seven children are playing basketball. How many children are playing tag? Okay, so let's look at where tag is. So we have tag all the way down here, and we're going to follow the tag bar all the way to the very end, and it seems to end on the number five. So that means that five children are playing tag. You're right. Five children are playing tag. Which game are most of the children playing? You can find out by looking at the lengths of the bars. The bar for soccer is the longest, so the most children are playing soccer. Which game are the fewest children playing? Okay, so we noticed that soccer was um, the one that most children were playing because it was the longest. So if we're looking for the fewest number of children, uh, what, what game they're playing, then we're going to look for the smallest or the shortest bar in the graph. And that happens to be this yellow one here, which is for jump rope. Only four people are playing jump rope. So jump rope is the few, is the, is the game that is being played by the fewest number of children. Excellent! Jump rope has the shortest bar, so the fewest children are playing jump rope. So just a, a quick uh, little thing that they didn't mention here, and they probably will um, once we learn about how to create our own bar graphs. Right now we're just trying to learn how to read them and kind of understand what they're showing us. Um, but usually in a bar graph, all of the topics are different colors. So if you can see basketball here is green, jump rope is yellow, soccer is blue, and tag is orange. Okay, so um, we usually, for every subject, is going to have a different color bar. Um, because each subject is different than the other ones. So um, it wouldn't make sense if we had uh, soccer and tag both be blue because then we wouldn't really understand which one is soccer and which one is tag if the labels weren't here. So we always want to make sure we label um, the topics that we're um, using in our bar graph and we also want to give each topic its own color bar. Okay, so that's just something to, to kind of remember. Now let's practice with the personal math trainer. All right, so let's practice and do some activities together. So the first question says, use the bar graph. Greg chose a place that has more votes than the aquarium and the, amuse than the museum together. Which place did Greg choose? Okay, so he chose a place that has more votes than the aquarium and the museum together. So we have to first find out what, how many votes are there um, for the aquarium and the museum. So the aquarium looks like um, is showing that five children um, chose the aquarium, okay? And three children chose the museum. So five plus three is eight. So we have to find a, um, a place that was picked by more than eight children, okay? So we know off the bat that it's not the museum, it's not the aquarium. Let's look at the zoo. Is the zoo um, showing more than eight children that picked it? Let's see. So we go all the way to the end of the bar graph and this is showing nine. So n yes, the zoo would work. Let's check the beach just to make sure. So the beach is going all the way to seven, so that wouldn't work either. So our correct answer is the zoo. Good job. Okay, so you gotta be very careful of what they're asking you sometimes because sometimes they might have you add two things together and then ask you a question about which one is more or which one is less. So be very careful about what they're asking you in these questions. Number two says, use the bar graph. Suppose six more trees are brought to the farm. How many trees would be at the farm then? So what we're going to do is, um, again, it says, suppose six more trees were brought to the farm. How many trees would be at the farm then? So we're gonna have to add how many trees are here all 
together. And then we're going to add six more to that number. So we see six uh, for oak, we see five for pecan, we see seven for maple, and we see two for apple. So let's add these up together. So I can do some mental math and I can do six plus five, which I know is 11, right? And then I add seven more. So seven plus 11 is 18. And then two more, which would be 20, right? Now we're going to add six more trees to that 20. So 20 plus 6 would be 26. Great work! Okay, so just another good example of being very careful about what they're asking you because um, a lot of times they'll be asking you different questions that require you to do different steps. So really make sure that you're thinking about what the question is asking you before you kind of go and pick your answer. It can be very, very tricky and they can definitely try and trick you with some of their questions that they ask you. Now try your homework on your own with the personal math trainer. It includes the exercise you saw at the beginning of the lesson. Okay, so I think that um, this video gave us some great examples on how to uh, read a bar graph. So I don't think we need to do any other um, extra activities. Um, so I think everybody is good to go on to Think Central and complete the assignment for 10.4. And again, I just, I just want to make sure that we all understand. Just be very, very careful about the questions that they ask you. Um, on your assignment. So read the questions very carefully, think about what they're asking you, and then think about what you have to do to find the correct answer. Okay, but I think that we have uh, been given some really good examples and activities on how to read a bar graph. So now you can log into Think Central and complete the assignment for 10.4 um, and uh, show us just how good you are at reading bar graphs. Okay, everybody, good luck and uh, have fun.